So tonight we're going to cook, um, we have a few recipes for us. We're going to do a butternut squash mac and cheese. And we have a stuffed mushrooms. And then we have brownie bites at the end. So be ready to cook. Is anybody cooking with us tonight? So that I make sure I give you guys the time to keep up with us. Is anybody cooking? I am. All right. So one of the first things that, super. Yay. So you have a, a, a sheet pan, uh, you have two of these, no, one of these. And you had parchment paper. So you can slice your parchment paper in half or tear it either way. And we're gonna roast our butternut squash first because that's gonna take the longest. So we wanna get that ready. So you should have cut your butternut squash and we have it over here. So we've got the butternut squash that we are going to toss with our olive oil. So slices pretty pretty close to the same size, right? You wanna keep similar sizes so that it roasts evenly. And then you can stir it up, put it in your olive oil. Okay. I'm gonna stop the video for a second. It's, it's going crazy. Can you all hear me still? Yeah. Okay. So if for those of you that can hear me, just toss your butternut squash together into your olive oil. There should be a one ounce container, you know, little, little ones with about a teaspoon of olive oil. So put that together and that one actually says boo on it. Boo for butternut squash. Uh, so we, have, we have a couple little ones outside. We have Logan H. Yay! Uh, oh! Shepard has cooked with us before on 181. Okay, so are we back? Yeah. Okay. So we tossed our butternut squash in the olive oil. You just want to coat it so it gets um, nicely covered. And then we're going to roast that. So you're going to put it into your dish and I'll flatten it out because we want to do that single layer so flatten it out get everything good and separated all right and we're going to roast it at 425 that's one thing we may did we mention to preheat your ovens everybody ah if you didn't preheat your oven you want to have it preheated so for wait till it gets to 425 before you roast you don't really want to you don't want to bring your temperature up while your squash is in there. So mine's at 425 and we're going to roast this for, um, let me put my timer on. We're going to roast it for uh, 30 minutes. Okay. So we're going to start that. So that's going. And then we're going to start on the mushrooms because the mushrooms will come pretty quick together, but we're going to leave them We'll make them, mix them up, and then we're going to leave them set so that we can put them on the same sheet that you use. But if you have another sheet, you can definitely um, grab another pan. All right. Mushrooms. Why do I encourage you not to soak them in water or put them in water? I actually need a saute pan from one of the, I, yeah. If it looks good, we'll be we'll be good. So, as far as like cleaning them off, I had a rag earlier. So what I want to do is, I, my question to everybody was, do I put these in water? Do I run water over them, or is it better just to do like the dry wipe off? And really, ultimately, you you don't want to have to put them in too much water. Thanks, friend, because you'll end up. These are really porous and you'll end up pulling in water and then they will get soggy and you can't go back to that because we want to kind of get that crispy edge. And if you put them in water, then you'll end up pulling the water in and you won't get that nice edge. So the other thing too is there is, we're going to use the stems. So I'll leave it up to you if you want to de-stem it first. So to take the stem out, you kind of just rock it back and forth a bit and it should pop out. So we're going to cut off this eventually, but I'm going to take all the stems out first. And if they don't come out clear, then you can, 
you know, pull it off. Cause we're going to use that stem part for part of our, in, our inside mixture. Now, anybody know what kind of mushrooms these are that you're using tonight? Go. I want to guess. I'm going to cut off the end. Baby bell, it's yeah. Baby bell as it is. Now, if you wanted to do um, like a portobello, you just make a much bigger amount of filling because these would not be uh, big enough for, or small. Uh, you wouldn't have enough filling if you were doing portobellas. You'd probably get one of the whole mix. So what we're going to do is get this chopped up. And you also have garlic. Here we go. How nice. You have pre-grated garlic tonight. You don't have to worry about wiping your hands on your faucet. So we have garlic and we also have olive oil and we have Parmesan cheese. We have a spice. So that's the one that has MS on it. So it has pepper, onion powder, and cayenne. And then you have cream cheese. Okay. So we are going to, we've cleaned our mushrooms and we've, we're going to let our caps kind of sit on the side. We're going to chop up our ends. So you're going to get them as, <clears throat> you know, I just want to get them woo, flying mushrooms. We want to get them as small, you know, just bite size because they're going to have to mix up with your other ingredients and then be stuffed back in those mushrooms. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there's usually there's about 10 different types of mushrooms that are really common. Does anybody have any ideas of what my our 10 most popular mushrooms are? And I think I just included my stems, everybody on the bottom. <laughs> Well, we're going to cook. No, I actually, I took them off. Sorry, I was thinking I had them. I did take them off. What are some mushroom types of mushrooms that we have that are real common besides the portobello? Shiitake. Um, the baby bella. Shiitake is a good one. Uh, Inoki. Inoki. White button. Which one? White button. White button mushrooms, yeah. Any others? We're going to get that, chop that up real nice. Some of our sea powder is, is currently growing bright blue oyster mushrooms. Oh, yum. Um, Crimini? Crimini, yum. Okay, I'll believe you. <laughs> <laughs> that one is not a familiar one to me, but we're going to, okay, so now our next step is to heat our oil over, um, Obviously, we're going to heat it over the, in a pan, but um, any others that we can think of? Anybody heard of morels or porcini mushrooms? Did we talk about oyster mushrooms? So we have lots of different mushrooms, lots of different ones to choose from and uh, loaded with good stuff. And, you know, they grow in the dark, so... Are the ones in Sitar growing in the dark? Yes. Oh, wow. That's going to be really fun to see. Okay. So we're going to go over, I, we're going to shoot for medium heat. So five on your dial. And I'm going to scrape off my, um, oh, we're going to go garlic and mushroom stems. So get your minced, MMG, minced mushroom garlic. Uh, that with more minced mushroom garlic not mushroom minced garlic but minced mushroom garlic or either way all right that and your garlic and tap it out of there and so if you were if you were doing this at home and you starting without ingredients that's probably a clove of garlic so that you don't, um, if you needed to guesstimate, that's probably one, about one clove that you're working with. 
if you're doing this small of a recipe. So we're going to get this started up. I kind of have a giant pan for a, a little, yeah, a little bit of um, ingredients. So the olive oil is in there and I have the mushrooms in there with it. So we're going to eventually get that to kind of sizzle up and then it'll start to kind of sweat. The mushrooms will kind of sweat out. Um, so we want them to get nice and moist. And we're trying to get rid of some of that evaporate. We're going to evaporate some of that off. So the mushrooms are ready to go. The other thing I'll do is just, well, those are, well, my stove is heating up a little bit. I'll open my cream cheese. Um, so the origin of, you know, how they, they definitely grow in the dark, right? And we know there's 10 varieties. So they were actually cultivated as early as um, 600 CE in China and Japan. So we know that they've been around for a long time. It took a long time for US to pick up on mushrooms. And back in um, the first time it ever showed up in a cookbook, which is interesting, whoops, is in 1824. And some people actually have, I know some people that have had this cookbook, the Virginia Housewife cookbook is what started using mushrooms in a cookbook. So that was 1824, long time ago. Two cream cheeses in their bag with a finger. Okay. Yeah, because we have a small, so I'll show them a, you have about that size, so about an inch, right? Inch. That's about, I would say that's an, oh, two ounces compared to, you have a four ounce cube. So your four ounces is what you're going to use for um, tonight's mushrooms. Thank you. We want to make sure you get the right one in there. That's just taking a bit. So we don't want to overcook our mushrooms. We want to get it to soften, but we don't want to kill that garlic because remember the garlic is can burn easily. So try and keep it from going too hot, too fast. Okay. And um, we're going to start there. All right. So really mushrooms have been around a long time. And back in Egyptian... Um, for about 4,600 years ago, Egyptians believed mushrooms to be plants of immortality. So pharaohs um, decreed that only they could eat mushrooms. But now we know today that we are all immortals, right? <laughs> we have some form of immortality. So we now we can eat mushrooms, and, and but we know that they're really healthy. We have a lot of them. And it's just when you're going to use them and cut them and clean them is that you don't soak them in water. So we're going to use our roasting pan. All right. So it should look a little bit juicy. You know, your oil is starting to pick up and your garlic is cooking and you're going to start to smell that. Um, definitely start smelling the, the garlic. And you want to try and eliminate most of that moisture. So we're kind of evaporating out that moisture. But you can see they've definitely juiced up a bit more. And then once um, once we get done with this, we're gonna put them in and mix it with the cream cheese. So what I'll do is put the cream cheese in a, in a bowl and the Parmesan cheese in a bowl. And then you have your spice mixture. So you have your spice mixture that you will put in there and that was labeled, I just threw it off, MS, mushroom spice, okay? So you can, Kind of mix this and you if you had your cream cheese out um at room temp it would have you could mix it a little easier but once we put those hot mushrooms in that'll also help we're not going to put them directly in we're going to let them cool for a minute but i can at least mix this and then we'll add our mushrooms and this will be your filling so not to uh the recipes tonight are not too complex, but they just have a lot of time components and a lot of baking. Because we're going to bake these for about 20 minutes on 350. So we'll drop our temperature in our oven, give it a chance to drop a little bit, maybe leave your door open so we can drop the temp. And there, there's your mixture of cream cheese and Parmesan. Okay. And if you, uh, if you haven't mixed your Parmesan in yet and you want to have just a little on the extra, for the garnish side, you can do that, or 
if you have extra Parmesan cheese, you can add to the top. <laughs> Looking good. Our garlic is not burning. That's looking pretty good. And once we get this one done, we are gonna start with the, um, we'll put it together. Even if we don't put it in the oven yet, we'll have that mushrooms ready to go as soon as the butternut squash comes out. So again, flavor, moisture, kind of gone. It's definitely um, sizzling up a bit. Okay. If we talk about butternut squash, cause we have that, setting up for um, roasting, right? And we've talked about the importance of roasting vegetables and the whole, some of the reasons we roast veggies is to get that sugar content. It kind of caramelizes the sugar, gives them that wonderful taste. But again, um, butternut squash has not been around all that long either. And so we talk about butternut squash and it's, is it a fruit or is it a vegetable? There's a, there's a trivial question for you. Is a butternut squash a fruit or a vegetable? question for all of you to think about is it a fruit or a vegetable and I think my so my garlic is starting to, to brown so I think it's about time that I take it off and if we need to squish any of that let any of that oil go we can I'll set it to the side turn off my heat and then let it cool just a just a little bit I'll put some underneath so it kind of sits without the oil in it so is butternut squash a fruit or a vegetable? It has seeds, so it's a fruit. Wonderful. And what else does it do before it, um, how do we, how does a, how does a butternut squash start? I, I, I think that's the question we're going to ask. What, what do we start with with a, when we get a butternut squash, it's a vine, a flower. So that's also another indicator that it's a fruit. So other fruit style vegetables would be like eggplant, other squashes um, that we have. Okay, largest butternut squash. Any ideas? We're gonna mix. Weight wise, largest butternut squash. So today you had a half a butternut squash. I would say on average, when you go to the grocery store, they're probably three to four pounds. Uh, so what's our guess? guess? Keep going. No, oh, wow. Chantal's going high. Uh, Marley says 40 and Esther says 70. Okay, we're getting closer. So it's actually, anybody else want to say? I'll look. 80. 80, we're close. Any other guesses? I mean, of course. 90, Hey, that's probably the closest yet. So that kind of gives you an idea. Grown in Dundee, um, or actually it was not grown in Dundee, Michigan. So any of you from Michigan or mainland? It was weighed at Dundee's Pumpkin Palooza in October 1st of last year. So just last year, this one hit the record books. It's in the Guinness Book of World Records at 104.5 pounds. Yeah, Billy was saying one point. So. Yeah, really close, but a little over the over that one. But yeah, that's pretty big butternut squash. When you think of ours that you have at the stores, probably like I said, four, three to four pounds. So before we get moving on the butternut squash, I'm gonna take my mushrooms. So my I kind of squished them over here. We just don't want to have them too. We can eliminate some of that oil and some of that juice just so they don't get too juicy. Um, you can kind of squeeze them out a little bit, let that drain off. And then I'll put this into my cheese mixture without introducing all that oil back there. Okay. And we have a fork. So now we're gonna mix this. And then again, this is going to be a real, uh, a real thick mixture. So don't worry that it's thick right now. It will nicely melt when you put it together in your mushroom cap. So you should have it mixed up. And then what we'll do is, I, I think it would probably be easy to use a teaspoon. And we'll grab a teaspoon. And then we can kind of push it 
you can use your fingers if you want, but also you could use a teaspoon. And remember, you got to mix this or spread this out amongst six of your mushrooms. So just depend, kind of eyeball your size of what you're using and go from there. And if you broke, if you have a broken one, that's all right. You can, um, you'll be able to kind of keep it together. Maybe when you go to put, when we put this one in the pan, what I'll do is set it up against the edge so that it roasts without getting too soft and fall apart. So I'd say start with like a little bit more than a teaspoon. You want to get enough in there and you can kind of smash it in. So I'll start out by that much. And then if I need, if I have leftover, I'll add more. I want to fill that bottom. So kind of push it down in there. And then we'll, we'll fluff it to the top after we get it in. So like I said, you could use your fingers or a spoon, just smash it in so it's covering all that, the interior of your mushroom that you can't see. And some people actually will take out, I call, I call them gills. They look like gills, right? On the mushrooms. That inside um, the membrane, some people don't like to have that in there. So you could scrape it out, but I, I'm totally okay with leaving it in, but some people will actually scrape that out too. And we, we know that portobellas are actually a really nice substitute for a piece of meat because it's got so many amino acids and yummy benefits nutritionally that you can actually use them as a meat alternative. So you could grill them yeah. um, on the, on a grill or bake them. This one's definitely got plenty. So we'll clean up a little bit around the edges. And so we're going to use the leftover and fill it in, fill in the rest. And you want them kind of heaping because they actually will stay. This won't, nice thing is this won't like melt over. It will pretty much stay firm and you'll have a nice um, cap with that mound of cheese. Chantal says uh, they made uh, they made mushroom scallops once, and they do not taste like scallops. Oh yum! Chantal, you gotta share the recipe. That sounds wonderful. It's actually, a sea park scallops. Yeah, I, I mean, they're because uh, of their texture, they really have such a fun um, texture that you can do a lot with. I can tell you though that enoki mushrooms probably two weeks ago was under a recall. So, and the reason was is that they had, I believe it was, gosh, I want to think now, listeria. Uh, so they they recalled them, and I don't think it hit Hawaii as much as it hit mainland. I mean, uh, we don't often hear of too many things that get here that have a recall, but it's still always a good idea to keep an eye on. Uh, where your recalls are and when you hear about them king oyster mushrooms oh sounds wonderful I, i've got to try that so the next question i have is where do you find king oyster mushrooms my guess would be whole foods maybe or down to earth is that that's a good i don't know where to find those all right uh, for those of you who join late the recording will be posted on the CTAR YouTube channel. If you want to watch from the beginning. Perfect. Okay. Wonderful. All right. Mushrooms are ready to go. Our butternut squash has about 10 minutes to go. So we're going to let that keep going before we um, roll it. And one of the, this is not your typical macaroni and cheese, everybody. So. Normally you would boil your macaroni and then you'd be ready to go. But this one is actually all in one pot. You mix it, you cook it. It's very different than the typical mac and cheese. I need to tell you that ahead of time so that you don't think you have to cook your pasta. This one is totally like you brought, you pretty much kind of toast your pasta a little bit and then you add your butternut squash. So it's all in one pot, one time only. So you should have elbow macaroni. And then we should have um, sharp cheddar and Parmesan. 
and you should have a nice little small pat of butter, which was probably a tablespoon. Yeah. And then yeah. you also have that two ounces of cream cheese that we'll use. Plus you should have two and a half cups of water ready to go. So that's gonna be for your squash. So I'm gonna move my, um, here it is. So we have, this is where I think we have boo. Boo, butternut, olive oil. I'm getting better at our, <laughs> our uh, creative labeling. And then BS, butternut squash spice. Oh, it could have said BSS, but BS. Okay, so we're gonna have that ready to go. And when you have your butternut squash, I can kind of check on it now. Um, I don't wanna overcook it, but I, what I really wanna get is that soft, Consistency, think they're more so that you can mash it. Which now with butternut squash too, when you cut them open like fresh, I think all of you got them pre-seeded. But you can actually toast the seeds and eat the seeds. Uh, we've done that on a couple of different dishes. So I'll check my great today. stuff. Ah! The oven's trying to bite me. Let's see, because we had it in there for 30 minutes, but we're still, some of my pieces are a little soft, but it should be fork soft. We're close, because I can mash them. I think I'll go just a little bit longer, because some of my thinner spots are going to be softer. And I have seven minutes to go, so we might look at five minutes. Um. With, with two minutes left on the clock, I think I'll look at it then. Okay, so as that's finishing up, because you kind of want to have everything ready to go when you start this butternut squash recipe, yeah, because right. it kind of is, like I said, it's a different um, type of recipe where you're creating it in the pot altogether. So what you could do is get your, um, oh, butter, 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 parquet. Some of us might be old enough to know that one. Um, but we'll put your butter into the pot and make sure, because these are really thin sliced, double check that you get all your wrapper off. It's got, that make sure you don't have any leftover wrapper. All right, so we're gonna put that into the pot. And we will start our heat source on that. So we're going to go about medium. So we'll do that. And then we are going to add to that. You're going to be adding your um, garlic and onion powder. So our spices. And then we are going to let that cook for about two to four minutes. So it's going to change color a little bit. So I'm going to go medium heat. Get that to heat up and then we'll add our spice. And then if we think about cheese, so we'll, we're gonna be adding cheese, right? So why sharp cheese? And I know why, I mean, you could use any, really any cheese, but why sharp? Why is sharp one of the better ones? Any thoughts? you could really use any but sharp cheese usually has a little more flavor right a little more it's aged longer so the sharper it is the more it has aged that's why it's more expensive so if you go mild aged very low medium middle sharp very much aged and if you get like extra sharp it's been aged even longer so that's why the cost goes up is the longer they have to work with it the longer you the more you pay so mac and cheese is obviously one of those um old fashioned type of a dish. Um, and I think that when we think of um, it's popular to the US, there is a president who also has introduced other items into the White House, but this president, same president introduced macaroni and cheese into the White House or into, um, yeah, into American cuisine. Does anybody know who that would have been? Or who made it popular, start that popularity? We talked, we've talked about them in other cooking shows. I'm gonna add my seasoning. 
And this is long time ago. So my all my teachers out there, you might have an idea of who introduced macaroni and cheese long time. You got it. Who was that? Who guessed that? Nice. Yeah, Thomas Jefferson. He also introduced vanilla ice cream. Oh, so we don't want to get it brown too brown. So watch your time and temp. That was the spices that I added. So it talks about, you know, making them brown. We definitely can get, yeah, it'll brown real quick. So just go short burst of time. So then we're going to let that, because it talks two to four minutes, but I think just because of our size and our volume, you're not going to have to go much more than what that wasn't even a minute. So we don't want to go too hot. And the, the whole point of cheese is not to scorch it. So we're going to make sure that we don't overcook it. Um, but Thomas, yeah, Thomas Jefferson. Um, so really popular in the U.S., obviously, and you'll find all kinds of different things. You've got pasta making machines now, and so there's pasta is a big secondary piece for us. Um, but actually, baked macaroni and cheese, uh, because with this Black History Month, right? Oop, and I think I have paper. Ah, I do. Butter paper. Cecily says that. Thomas Jefferson sent his inventor to Germany to France to bring back Hey, okay. So that's where it's been. It's been around a long time. Uh, but being that it's Black History Month, black mac baked macaroni and cheese was one of those soul food cuisines that got turned into more of an American dish. So the um, baked macaroni and cheese was created by James Hemming, an African-American enslaved um, person who was trained as a culinary chef in France. So is that maybe what Cecily is yeah. talking about? Yeah. So interesting, kind of some interesting facts there. Uh, and the largest, largest pasta. So this is, you know, we have shells, right? And I think I'm going to stop my, pull that off the heat so it doesn't cook anymore. I turn off my oven, turn off my timer, and then we're going to take out our butternut squash. Um, there is a lot of different types of pasta out there, right? We can find all kinds of fun shapes and sizes. Um, so what I'll do next is, ooh, hot. Uh, let's do this. So we're gonna smash this in the pan and we're shooting for about a cup. So it should, if you cooked it, um, soft enough, this is what you want to get. You want to get that soft, smashed texture. And this just adds a nice uh, moistness to your mac and cheese. I mean, we already have cheese in there, but this adds a real nice, uh, rich flavor. You don't really taste the butternut squash. I don't think we tasted butternut squash. I think we tasted more cheese, right? So we're going to turn this pan again into our mushroom cooking device as well. So as soon as I get this out. And of course, this recipe that we're doing with you tonight is a half a recipe. So if you did your, um, your whole butternut squash, it would be a nice, you'd have a lot of macaroni and cheese because it's actually made, this was a half a pound of macaroni, which in turn becomes about a little under a pound cooked. So we have a good dish tonight. All right. So you want to get it mashed up as good as we can. And then I'll measure it out. I, I can pretty much tell you that you can use the whole thing. But this is good. We'll put it into a cup just so you can kind of get an idea how much that was. And I think we're going to come right in at a cup. And if you have a few chunks, that's totally okay. Okay. All right. So if you're short a little bit of a cup, you're still fine. All right. So we're going to take, we'll leave that on the stove. Take out our liner and I'll toss my liner. And then we're going to put our mushrooms on here. And our mushrooms have to come down on temperature to three, what did I say? 350. Okay. 
probably going to be ready to go. Yeah. So I'll let that cool off a little bit. But we'll put our, uh, the one that was kind of broken, I'm going to put it up against the wall of the, I did not. I actually have another. So you all have a full, like a full sheet. So if you cut it in half, it's floating because of the heat. If you have, you can either fold it or cut it in half. And we'll put parchment. If you don't have parchment paper at home, you could do a little bit of um, like kitchen spray or Pam, something that would just to help it prevent from stick. So I put that one in the corner that's kind of the broken edge. All right, so there we go. We're ready to put those in the oven. And we're gonna cook those for, what's our time on that one? I think 20. 20 minutes. So I'm going to do 15 because my oven's hot. So we'll start there and we'll see how it goes. Okay. Back to your butternut squash. So our butternut squash, now you have your mixture like kind of stuck to the bottom of the pan. But that, as soon as we get some liquid in there, it'll pick it up. So we're going to come over here a little further over and we're going to add um, your pasta. So we're gonna add the dry pasta and we're gonna coat it. So the whole point would be to coat it with that butter that's in there, but your butter might have stuck to the bottom of the pan. So you're kind of mixing it up and stir it up. You'll see a little bit of oil there. We'll try and get that seasoning off the bottom of the pan once we get every, all the liquids in, that'll help. So stir it around. We'll coat it. Okay. So it looks shiny, should be coated. And then we will add our water. It's still hot. Oh, it's kind of the oven was hot. Okay. So we're going to add our water and our salt. So if you have um, no salt, you can add a little bit of salt to that. We did find that we needed a little bit of salt on the final product, so you could add salt. Remember when we do, when we make pasta, a um, couple of things that you usually add to pasta would be oil, which we already have in there because we have butter, but you always salt your pasta water so that you give it that flavor. So I'll put a couple pinches in of salt because we we're about that much when we did a final recipe, and that might help your flavor. And of course you can always add, but it sometimes is a little harder to mix it in uh, and get that salt mixed in well at the end. So we'll mix that up. And I've got my heat on too. So I'm gonna turn that up a bit. So we're going to, um, you put your water in the pan. How's everybody doing cooking with me? I should check on that. How, how's everybody cooking? Are we doing all right? All right, super, yes. yay, good, all right, so we got the pasta in there, oh good, sounds like everybody's keeping up, wonderful, so got you've got your um, water in there, you've got your um, salt, we're going to add our, this is we're going to add our butternut squash, I remember butternut squash is super loaded with nutrients as well. That's a good vitamin A for us. Moms love using butternut squash for kids because it's not too, um, it's pretty mild. So it's nice to have, um, nice to introduce one of like, it's usually one of the first foods that a lot of parents introduce to their kids young just because it's so mild. So I'm going to try and, smash some of those giant pieces that didn't get smashed up. So we're going to have that cooking um, and we're going to bring this, talks about um, cover it and bring it to a boil over high heat. So here's the one thing I want to tell you, if you keep it high, if you heat the temperature up and you don't have it covered and you go on like medium heat, and wait for it to boil, you're evaporating some of that water off. So then it'll start drying out too fast. So 
put it, um, get your heat on high. Feel comfortable with that. I always get a little leery when it comes to high, but we're gonna put it on high and we're gonna cover it so that we can actually keep that water solid in there so that we don't have any kind of um, evaporation. Okay, and then once that comes to a boil, let's see where we are on our recipe. We're gonna get that up to a boil and then we will um, take the lid off and go for five for eight minutes, but we can drop the heat a little bit because we found that it just really evaporated pretty quickly. So we will get this up to a boil, which might, boy, would it take us like five minutes, 10 minutes? Well, we're gonna shoot for, we'll check it in five. In the meantime, we can actually, um, I think we can start making our brownies. So I'll have this ready to go and we'll mix, we're gonna mix it in the pot. So brownies. Have a microwave safe bowl. And you're gonna mix your, uh, so we have brown sugar. We have butter again. We have BF for brownie flour. We have BV for brownie vanilla. We have an egg and you have cocoa powder, okay? And you also have a little tray. So you can line your tray out with these fun wrappers. So fun thing about fun facts about brownies, <clears throat> because brownies are, you know, have been around for a long time, but how do we know where they started? They really don't have an idea, but remember a lot of, a lot of foods were accidents, right? A lot of things in the kitchen became accidents. And so somebody at some point in time mixed melted chocolate into um, biscuit dough and then forgot to add flour. Hmm, have I heard that ever before? We missed out on the flour. So you, if you don't have flour, if you don't want to use flour, I mean, you can use alternative flours, but if you don't have flour, it, it turns into more of like a, um, well, a flourless cake, right? So it's a little heavier and it's a little denser, but it still has a nice um, brownie. It's kind of, we've done lava cakes in the past. It's a lot like a lava cake because it's just very low or no flour. So a flourless cake would be an option. So you mix your butter and your brown sugar. Now, when you measure brown sugar, what's the standard for measuring brown sugar? Somebody tell me that. What's the standard procedure for measuring brown sugar? Because we all do it right, but sometimes we forget. So what's the standard when it comes to measuring brown sugar? What's the standard What's expected, if it doesn't say it on the recipe, what's expected for that measurement? Oh, everybody knows to pack it. <laughs> Yay, pack it up. So pack your brown sugar, everybody, if you're doing it from scratch, pack it so that when it comes out, it looks just like the container you measured in. So fabulous. I don't know anybody that would, you know, we all forget sometimes, so hey, it's, it's totally okay. We make changes, but we can go back and make sure we pack it. So pack your brown sugar. So we're gonna microwave this. So you're gonna all follow me and we're gonna put a cover on it. It talks about a whisk. So if you have a whisk, if not, you could do it with a spoon. And it sometimes it gets stuck in the flour. I mean, not the flour. And sometimes in the butter, it gets the brown sugar gets stuck. So we're gonna, I kind of pat this around. We're gonna cover it and then we're gonna microwave it for 30 seconds. So you're gonna walk with me over to the microwave. If you don't have a microwave, everybody, don't worry, put it in a stove. Put it on top of the stove in a pan, you'll get the same effect. We're just gonna melt the butter and make that brown sugar um, melted together. So we're gonna still have that consistency and you'll see it coming out of the microwave. If you don't have one, use the stove, okay? So we're gonna, Kelly's gonna follow me and I'm gonna grab a paper towel and we're gonna go to the microwave. So we're gonna shoot for 30 seconds at a time. Make sure your bowl is microwave safe. Cover your butter. Now, if I don't cover my butter, if I did it on high, I'm gonna do this on high. So we're gonna go 30 seconds on high. If I don't cover my bowl of butter and you put it in the microwave and you let it go, a whole cube of butter, let's say, it's not the same recipe, but let's say you're gonna melt butter. 
But what happens if you try to what happens? And I get some answers from Jesse. <laughs> what happens when we don't cover butter, put it in the microwave to heat it up or warm it or whatever, and you forget about it or you walk away and put it on there for a minute on high? What might happen? So here is what we're. actually worked really good it will splatter and you'll be cleaning up your microwave so cover it that will help you save some time in the long run and i'm I, as most of my students know i am not one to put stuff in the microwave on high but this one actually calls for it to be on high so and it's just 30 second bursts which is much better than a minute and walking away oops that got soggy we're going to grab another paper towel so we can cover it up. So we have to do this a total of three times. So you're going to microwave it again on 30 seconds. And it's going to get, so one of the things that you're doing is you're melting the butter, but you're also allowing the heat to kind of dissolve your sugars. We're kind of going to dissolve. It's still going to be a little bit granule, which is fine but you're going to get that nice consistency of butter uh, combined. And then we're going to add, we're going to take it back there, kind of let it cool a little bit because we're going to add egg, um, cocoa powder, flour, and the, and the seasoning. So we want to make sure we have it ready to go. So there's another 30 seconds. And I this time I won't pull it out. Or I, I can. I can pull it out. Just getting warm on the bottom. Make sure you're, um, if you're going to use a hot pad to grab it, you can. Okay. All right. So we're going to add it again. We'll go another 30 seconds. I always have to make sure my uh, towel doesn't fly off. So uh, this again is a, a very different recipe for brownies. I mean, we all have, we Typically, we'll melt stuff on the stove and melt the butter and the, put everything together. But this one is uh, a, a unique version of it. So again, you, you'll trust these, and I, I think it's always fun to say. And so this is a new one for me. I've nev never never put uh, butter in the microwave, and it's dropped in there. So that's all right. Put that down. So this is new and exciting versions of brownies. All right, so we're gonna take this back and I'll stir it up a little bit more because it's real hot on the bottom. Oh, and I'm boiling over here too. So we're gonna let that sit for a second. So we're boiling, we're gonna uncover that. So look at my, um, we're gonna uncover that. We're gonna stir it just a little bit. Whoops. Losing my. Yep. So we're going to let the lid go and we're going to time it for eight minutes. Eight minute timer. And we'll see some of that liquid start to, to absorb a bit. So we're going to let that go. We've got three minutes on our mushrooms, eight minutes on our mac and cheese. Let's bounce over to our brownies. This is like multitasking tonight. And you do all the things at one time. So we'll try and incorporate that butter into there. Oops. Again, it, the whisk is nice because you kind of get that mixture. This is not the deepest bowl. So if you have a deeper bowl, of course, you can stir a little easier. And I'm going to transfer this into a different bowl anyways to make it a little easier to stir. So the next step for this one is that we're going to um, add the eggs. Now, if you are really like into want to go fast, then we need to make sure your eggs get, we call it tempering. So what we'll do is we're going to put an egg into, we're going to mix it all in another bowl. And I'm going to put my, I'm going to crack my egg first because I don't like to um, put it over anything except for just the eggs. So we're going to crack it first and we'll get it in there and make sure we don't get any shells. Okay.
I'm going to stir my pasta a little bit so it doesn't scorch. I'm also going to turn, I'm going to turn my heat down to about seven. I really don't want to scorch the bottom. My seasoning has kind of loosened up on the bottom too. And you can kind of see how your pasta has started to get a little softer. Okay. Less than a minute on the mushrooms. I can smell them. I'm going to stir my egg. Doesn't matter if there's, in fact, if you're using that hot oil and sugar, this is what we call tempering, right? So take a little bit of your sugar and butter mixture, add it to your eggs. If you added your egg right into that hot mixture and it's really hot, you scramble your eggs. So this is called tempering, where you actually can warm up the heat of your egg without scrambling it. And we'll blend that up. And that'll also help the, um, the, the to liquefy our sugar. So that is our mushrooms. And we're going for a little bit of a tan top. So those actually look like they could use just two minutes more. So I will do a timer for two more minutes. Start, we'll go for that. In the meantime, I can add the rest of my sugar and butter into my eggs and that's hot so stir it and I've never made a brownie mixture with brown sugar so this was another run at something different and it's it has a an amazing taste to it remember what's the difference between brown sugar and white sugar what's in brown sugar that's not in white sugar Thanks, Prem. What do we have in brown sugar that we don't have in white sugar? Uh, molasses. Molasses, yeah. So you're going to have, it's just going to be a little bit of a richer mixture. Okay, pasta's, whoa, it's getting close. So I'm going to try my, um, I'm going to stir this. Ooh, yeah, now I smell it on the bottom. Keep an eye on your pan. So that even says, I think we still have way much longer than eight minutes left. So you might even cut it down to five or turn your heat, you know, down to half. We got four minutes left, roughly. Yeah, so you might wanna turn your pasta temperature down a little bit. And we're trying to get al dente too, so we don't want it to overcook. Coming back to our brownies. You guys all doing good with me cooking on that side? I love it. So we're gonna add our flour, our, um, sorry, not our flour yet. We're gonna add the cocoa powder. Okay. And we're gonna add the vanilla. And then we'll mix that together. Stir my... Some of you that have your kiddos cooking with you, if they can stir, ah, oh, then we got our mushrooms coming up. Wow, I think I need six arms. Oh yeah, here we go. All right, so, and if you wanna get them even a little bit browner than that, you can, but that's, you got a little bit of a brown top on there. Nice and soft. So I'll leave that, I'll turn off my kitchen timer. I don't think we're gonna bake anything else. So here is your, yeah. Brownies. Oh, I got a brownie. Ah, so I didn't turn it off. Here's what you're shooting for on your mushrooms. So give them a little bit of a browning. We did throw a little bit of extra Parmesan cheese on top if you want. That was just as a garnish and then parsley. <laughs> okay, so brownies. Ooh, can we do it in six minutes? We still have to do the finish the mac and cheese. All right, you all, you're hanging in there with me. Good. So this one, I'm going to just mix up my cocoa powder. This has just the cocoa powder eggs sugar, butter. I'm not as worried about overmixing it with the cocoa powder in there. When I get to the flour, I don't wanna overmix it because I don't want it to get tough. So we're gonna mix this good. Mix this up nice and um, it's gonna have your shiny glossy appearance, right? You don't have to stir too long, but I like to give it a good mix so that you kind of incorporate that sugar. And Prem, how much time on our um, noodles? Two minutes. Two minutes. I think they're looking pretty good. 
Okay. So that is what you're looking for before you add your flour. So get it nice and runny and consistency is nice and glossy. And then we're ready to add the flour. So once you get your flour in, this is where you don't want to overmix. So I just kind of gently stir it in. I'm still using a whisk. It talks about folding and whisks are not usually folding mechanisms, but you can use what you're comfortable with. I'm just going to stir it and make sure we just want to get it just mixed. We don't want to over, we're not going to be doing it a long time. Okay. So you should have your mixture combined and I'm going to let that sit for just a second. Cause I'm going to check my mac and cheese. All right. Hey, that's looking pretty good. Actually what's feeling like it was stuck on the, ah, a little bit of a, crust of some of the edges. So now your noodles are pretty much cooked. You've pulled up all that water, right? We're getting them pretty much al dente. And then we're going to add the, um, I gotta go back to my recipe. We're going to add the um, cream cheese. We're going to turn our temp down to low. So crank that back down to like one. You'll add your cream cheese. One of the things with cheese, you don't want to overcook cheese, especially like the cheese, um, the, sh the shredded cheese because it will toughen, but cream cheese, we want it to melt. So we're gonna put this into the mixture and I turned it down. I still hear it kind of popping. I should have unwrapped this. That was our time, yeah. So I went a little earlier than the eight minutes. So it's up to you, it, you make the call on your time, but I'll put the cream cheese find the edge. Drop that in, we're gonna stir it. That because of the heat, it'll melt nicely, right? If you wanna taste it after you get all your cheeses in to see if you need more salt or um, hopefully we salted the water enough in the beginning that you're set to go. Stir it up, mix that in. And I did keep that kind of low. So I still kept, I turned the temperature down before I even added the cream cheese. And it talks about cooking this another four to five minutes. So you can do another four to five minutes on low. Cause my noodles are cooked. You can tell just a bit by, if you were to, they're definitely um, al dente. So they're cooked. So we're gonna go four minutes more. And in that four minutes, we're going to put our brownies in the pan to get those in the oven. Okay, so we're gonna back up a little bit and we're gonna go for this. And what we did was we have a red scooper, but if you're, if you're doing it at home, a two tablespoon size wise to go into your brownie cup. So I'll try and shake off my excess, but we're gonna go about two. So you're gonna shoot for two tablespoons. And that should fill it up just a little over half. Or two tablespoons worth. And if you have to go back and fill them in equal amount, that would be fine. Remember the equal, equal cooking is always good just because you can get that um, same cooking time. So I had to add a little bit to that one. And you can pull from if you have to. Whoop. At my house, everybody used to fight over the brownie bowl. But I advise you all that there are recommendations that you don't eat raw flour or raw eggs. So I'll leave that up to your best choice as if you want to lick your bowl. I think we're going to have to pull from after I scrape. It's very thick, viscous dough. Just keep that in mind too. So try and get it as much as you can out of your can. It's like really, really thick. And 
And there, it, here's the other thing too, because we'll probably run out of time to catch it before these are done. If you want them fudgy, you're probably gonna cook them about the 40 minutes. So I started actually with the, because I thought in the um, muffin tin, it would cook a little quicker, but I ended up, I kept adding time. So um, I went 20 minutes to start and it was still very raw in the center. So give yourself a good 40 minutes, 30, at least 35, depending on how fudgy you like them. The more fudgy you like them, the less time you cook them in the oven. An even amount and scrape off as much. Okay. Ah. Okay, they're ready to go in the oven. And we're gonna shoot those for 40 minutes. And we'll start that. And you've got, we'll do it this way so you can see our outcome. I can't read all these little guys. Let's hang. Hey, let's hang. <laughs> we're hanging out tonight. Thanks for hanging out with us. And then we have, I can't read the rest of these. Super cute. All right. Come back to your mac and cheese. We've given that enough time to cook, melt down a little bit more, and we're gonna add okay, runaway noodles. Whoops. And it's getting super, super creamy. Then we can add our oil. No, that's extra, sorry. We're gonna add our cheeses. And again, one of the things I was starting out with, but I didn't get to that. <laughs> Keep your temperature low on your temperature for adding cheese. Otherwise you'll make it separate and be not as nice. So keep it cool, cool your, take your pan off the heat, whatever you need to do, just don't overcook your cheese. Okay. So you're going to mix this in and already it's looking amazing. I, turn, I just turned off my burner because the cheese will melt on its own. So we are at the point where that is just going to, cook together, melt together. You're going to stir it up and it will be servable within a minute. So stir it up to get that consistency. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Look at the strings. That's, that's, that tells you that's macaroni and cheese. That's amazing. So very cheesy, yummy. Here's your final product. Wow. I'm three minutes over. Thanks everybody for joining us in, on this February. Have a wonderful weekend. It's Super Bowl weekend. What a great time to create some of these fun, fun dishes and have a safe weekend. We'll see you next month. Bye everybody.